Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Britain is brimming with hoarders. Oh, look, another console. Every time I look at one part, I think, where do I start? Their collecting is catastrophic. You keep seeing stuff and you keep thinking, yeah, I'll go on. And they're drowning under clutter. Whoa! But help is at hand. Get rid of it for a bit of sanity. Collectibles expert Curtis Dowling will work out what is worth cashing in. I could get between 60 and 100 pounds for you. Very happy. It's a pleasure. Marvellous. While queens of clean Joanna Riley and Marianne Kamak will sort out what to keep and what to chuck. You can't even get in the door. The majority of the stuff is beautifully wrapped. It's been well taken care of. Clearing rooms for the first time in years. Guys, this is amazing. But no one said it would be easy. Well, we're getting there, aren't we? So can our hoarders bear to part with their possessions? You can't send him to the skip, can you? And reclaim their homes for good. I'm keeping an eye on you, though, because ah. uh, there's some of them I like to keep. Today, they're taking on a flat that's so full of clutter, it's a struggle to even find the furniture. There's a bed settee yeah. under there. Really? Yes, really. It's so cluttered, yeah. she can't even sit down, can she? <laughs> and a mum whose house is overflowing with all manner of collections. It's absolutely crazy. I just have so much stuff. So she's put in a call for some expert assistance. OK, let's talk about what you paid and what we think they're worth. Some of these things just need to be put in here and organised. I know. Later, our SOS experts will head to Plymouth to help Kerry clear up and clear out the home she shares with her daughter, Emma. But first, we're in Bristol to meet 59-year-old ex-vintage trader Jan and her flat full of furniture and fashion. So, this is my bedroom with this wonderful array of piles and piles and piles of clothes. Jan's passion for vintage has taken over every room in her one-bed maisonette flat. Her kitchen, living room and bedroom are full to the brim with clutter, to the point where she has trouble locating things. Don't ask me where any of the corsets are because I don't have a clue. I'm struggling at the moment to find a memory stick, let alone corsets. And she has no privacy left. This is my loo, which is in my bedroom. When people come to use my loo, they see all my piles and all their glory. And they can't even shut the door to go to the loo properly. Jan needs help sorting this mess. I just want to come home and not think about, oh, my God! Time to bring in our two experts. Curtis is an antiques guru with 25 years' experience who's here to help Jan find things to sell. Nice palatial house. Marianne's job running an immaculate B&B &B means she can help Jan decide what to keep and clear out. Hello! Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Nice to, nice meet, to meet, you. meet you. Into the cool. Oh, yeah, I know. It's really hot. Would you like to come up and see my flat? Do you know what? I think we would. Good luck. Come on, then. I'm going to take you upstairs, Marianne. Oh. Well, I'm going to make a cup of tea, then. I'm off. Well, Curtis makes a start downstairs. Well, I never. An old typewriter. No one knows what they are anymore. Jan takes Marianne straight up to the worst room, that bedroom. Come on, then, Jan. Show me what you got. Oh, everything. You name it, I've got it. Fur coats, dresses, skirts, bits of vintage, you Close name it. labels on still. I know. Soon it'll be hitting the ceiling, yeah. coming out the roof. Once this is clear, the bedroom will appear three times bigger than it already is. I just think it's become overwhelming. Once upon a time, mm. it didn't exist. Now it does. Life's got in the way. I've outgrown it. It's got to go. I've really struggled with it just because of time. And is it just a case of, like, you see something, you think it's a bargain, I'll buy it? I think there is a bit of that, a little bit of retail therapy. I think the biggest challenge for Jan is she's still a little bit hesitant, but I think with me pushing her along the way, she'll get there. 
Jan's hoarding started over a decade ago. I think it probably started around about 2005. I became uh, quite unwell. Um, and a few years later, it transpired that I had a benign tumour on my thyroid, which I had removed. So I moved back up to Bristol to be near my daughter and my mum and have my operation. A lot of my things were in storage, um, but eventually they couldn't stay in storage. And so that was the start. Everything ended up here. And then on top of everything else, Jan's mum fell ill too. I don't spend every night here anymore. When she was really poorly last year, I didn't even sleep here for about three months. So I just don't get time to think about it anymore. And, and yet I am thinking about it in the back of my mind. I'm thinking about it all the time. So now is the time to clear the clutter and her mind. She's hoping Curtis can give her some sound advice on selling this early 60s record player. Got all the original paperwork, and, but it needs restoring. I think it's really funky. I bet that was so expensive when it was Absolutely. made. yeah. Does so, it work? I don't honestly know. I was told it worked when I bought it. I got it reasonably cheap. Define the word reasonably. Um, 60 quid I paid for it. So what's your bottom line? I'd say 45. Right, see, that's OK. Well, I'd do my absolute best to get 45. Mm. And if I'm offered 42? <gasps> Go for it. Ah, uh, you see, so that's not your bottom line, no, 45, is it? No, it's is it? Well, all right, then, 40. Right, so anything under 40, it's not selling? No. What's this money being used for? I'd like to do a charity challenge to Trek Peru, Machu Picchu. Oh. I think you have to raise about 4,000. Um, all I've done so far is pay for the deposit. Right. Um, which is £150. So you need another £3,850. <laughs> yeah, quite a bit. OK. It's it will soon add up. Forward. I think it so, It will soon yeah. add up. Yeah, it will need to. Jan doesn't want to get rid of all these things to buy new garden furniture. She wants to go to Machu Picchu and do something fabulous for charity. Now, that's pressure on me. Back in the bedroom, Marianne's been mulling over how to deal with Jan's enormous hoard of clothes. Well, I've got a little plan up my sleeve. Oh, have you? So, okay. we've got a keep box. Yeah. And we've got a charity box. Oh, right. OK. But Jan already has her own plan. A friend of mine who runs a charity shop for dogs and cats has challenged me to fill 23 black bin bags. I think more like 123 here. Yeah, but 23 is a good start, isn't it? Exactly. Time to kick off, then. This is for the charity? It's for the charity shop, yeah. And you love a le little bit of leopard print? I do like leopard print, so that's being kept. Oh, you're keeping this? I am, cos I like it. OK. She's still a little bit hesitant, but I think with me pushing her along the way, she'll get there. We need to have the organisation in here. When you've got rid of the, the 23 bags for the charity, then we need to sort of think about how we're going to put our clothes into some sort of order, mm. summer and the winter. Yeah. There's a bed what? settee under there. Really? Yes, really. Even more so why we need to clear it. So you can have the bed settee, yeah? yeah. So you can have a girlfriend stay. Not sure that girlfriend will ever be Marianne at this rate. The thing is, Marianne, I'm convinced I'm going to go to all these wonderful places to wear it. And those and wonderful do places it. don't happen, do they? No, they don't happen. Jan is such a lovely, heartwarming person. What she wants to do with her clothes that she's gathered over the years is basically pass on to charity. She's got a big task on her hands to fill 23 bags. Downstairs, Curtis has stumbled across a pair of vintage suitcases that Jan is willing to sell. They're selling, they're fashionable, they're retro, everyone wants them. This one's got legs on and it's been turned into a coffee table. I'm going to take them away and make the most money I can. Upstairs, Jan has more retro furniture that she'd like Curtis to take a look at. Oh, wow. <laughs> look at that. This is my lovely dressing table set. It's fab. I bought it in a charity shop. Right. Um, really, really cheap. But I fell in love with it because it's almost the same as one I had as a child. Oh. As far as I know, it's 1960s. I would say late 60s, yep. It is lovely, but I'm absolutely willing to let it go. It all looks in good condition. So what did you pay for this furniture? 
I paid the grand sum of £15 for this about 18 months ago. Do you know what? I think you got a bargain. Mm. I think it needs to go to someone who's going to pay top dollar because they want it to yeah. keep, not to sell. So that's the dressing table, the record player and the suitcases that Curtis can sell for Jan. But there's still a lot to do. That flat is rammed, isn't it, to mm. be honest? She wants to give, she wants to do this, but she also just wants her space, really. Yeah, it's so cluttered yeah. she can't even sit down, can she? Mm. You've got your work cut out. I have indeed, I and tell you. I've and you've got, got, my... got your work cut yeah, out. Yeah, to get that money for her, to be honest. Time to go. I think it is. So Marianne is staying behind to help Jan tackle her clothes. We can do that, that and that. And Curtis has brought her quirky suitcases to a market and he's already found a potential buyer. Right, so I've got Shannon turning up to look at the suitcase table, but I'm really keen to sell both of them. Not because I want more money, just I really don't want to split them up. Oh, wow. Look at the inside of that. It feels like it's never been used. Yeah, that's really beautiful. Bit of a suitcase collector? Yeah. Why? Um, I don't know, I just like them. Do you know what? They're two of the funkiest yeah, suitcases I've really, seen. Yeah, they're really, really funky. I'm more inclined to buy the table because I think that's very, very clever, the way it's been upholstered yeah, isn't that fun? to... Yeah, What are you thinking for the table? Probably about, like, 25 to, like, 35. I won't let the table go for less than 35. OK. If I could do you a deal on both that you were happy with, would you take them? Would you give me £45 for both? They're sisters now. 45 quid? Yeah, 45 quid. Deal. Deal. Do you know what? You've got one. Result. And that's the first £45 towards the Machu Picchu fund. Right. Good luck with your new purchase. Oh, wow. I'm so happy. Thank you. Thanks ever so much. <laughs> See you later. See ya. So, Shanna's just gone and she bought both suitcases. Honestly, I think if she hadn't have done, I would have walked away from this sale because it just seems silly splitting them up. Good news is, got £45 for Jan. I think she's going to be delighted with that. Jan was not the only one to send out a hoarder SOS to our experts. Meet Kerry. I've moved around a lot. Where's the other shoe? In the last sort, of, last sort of 25 years, I've moved about 20 times. It's absolutely crazy. I just have so much stuff. Each time you move, you tend to acquire stuff that you feel that you need to take with you. So, bit by bit, these boxes would follow me around. She's also had many different careers, from beautician to musician. The worst rooms in my house um, has definitely got to be my lounge because um, this is where I have my music equipment, my beauty equipment. One of the other rooms that I feel is very cluttered is my bedroom, and that is obviously where I tend to store my shoes and my clothes. Stored is one word for it, I suppose. Never been worn. Never been worn. Never been worn. Been worn once. And even on some of these dresses, um, you know, there's still the labels. Oh, my God. Seriously, the amount of rubbish. Kerry's nine-year-old daughter, Emma, is unfazed by the piles of sartorial stuff. I would live in a clothes shop and a shoe shop <laughs> and a makeup shop. But Kerry's about to start a brand new career teaching music. It's time to get her life in order. Tidy house, tidy mind. I'm going into my PGC in September. It would be nice to um, have the summer with no clutter. Thankfully, Curtis has arrived to see if he can help find some items to sell. Kerry's dug out something she thinks might interest him, remnants from her hobby as a photographer. I did a photography course a few years ago and decided that I would buy some digital SLR cameras, so... <laughs> OK, and do you um, use them anymore? No, unfortunately. Not um, at all? No, I haven't used these. These I haven't seen the light of day for about two years. Uh, what did you pay for them? Can you remember? Yeah, I mean, each camera itself is worth around £500. Uh, or was or cost worth over £500, cost. yeah. Um, but then there's the additional um, flashes. They were 170 each. And then additional lenses as well. I've actually got um, a photography frame as well. I've got a backdrop frame, a black backdrop, a white backdrop, um, soft boxes. So, all in all, you probably paid £1,200, £1,400 for everything? I'd say easily, right? yeah. So your investment on something like this is returning you 
about 350, 400 pounds. Yeah. The value of used cameras depreciates quickly as photographers are always keen to upgrade to the latest model, which drives down the price of the older models. The initial idea was to make enough money to pay for a week's caravan holiday for me and my sister. As long as I get between, you know, five and six hundred pounds for all the items I'm selling, I'm really not too worried. You're quite rare. Sister. You're a realist. I'm certainly a realist. Two cracking cameras and she's got all the stuff that goes with it. If someone's setting up for the first time to do this professionally, this could be the item for them. So I've got to get the best price I possibly can. <sighs> Just hope it's going to be enough. I think there's some bad news coming her way. It's actually glass and base metal. This jewellery she thinks might be worth money is worth absolutely nothing. Oh, dear. But then buried within, there is some possible treasure. <clears throat> nice cat badge, though, from the Foreign Legion. Looks genuine. It's got enough weight. And it's got the guy's name on the back. So that's something that might make a few pennies. In Bristol, Curtis has already sold the vintage suitcases. Marianne is going great guns with Jan, who's already feeling the positivity of purging. So, Marianne, do you really believe that my life will improve once I've got rid of all this stuff? Yes. Do you? Yes, because how can you have a life living in this, in, in this clutter? There is one way in, one way to the bathroom, and there is no room for nothing. I know. I mean, this is just... Um, I've never, ever seen anything like it. Marianne, you ain't seen nothing yet. Come on, Jan, we need to get on. Crack on. Go. My word! What is all this about? <gasps> That's a bit of burlesque. I like I a can bit of burlesque. See. Yeah. So this is going to go. This is going to go. It's too small. So, if you actually think about this whole bag, whether we do everything individually, we'll be here forever. We want to crack on and get this room done. So, do you think everything in this bag can go? Absolutely. Right. So, already, in that short space of time, we've cleared. There. We can do that, that and that, and in no time we'll have the room cleared and we'll be ready to roll. The challenge is for Jan is basically she alone has to sort out what she wants to keep because some of those clothes that she's got have still got price tags on, have never been worn, and what she actually wants to give to charity. So she's got a big task on her hands to, to basically fill 23 bags. Marianne has given encouragement and advice, but now it's time for her to go and see if Jan can follow her clean and clear example. A bit scary, but I'm really excited. In Plymouth, Kerry has dug out something she hopes will add to her holiday fund. What you got? Well, um, I have a couple of books here. Right. Uh, this is The Coral Island. Now, um, a lot of people don't know, but it's one of the... Um, it's actually the original uh, Treasure Island. Mm. I think I paid about £2 for it, so okay. I'm not too right. worried. And another uh, one this there. is Ivanhoe. Yes, another very, uh, very old book. This one was um, given to somebody in 1933. And what I liked about this wasn't so much the book itself, but the personal message. Mm. It says, to Vera, with love and best wishes, for a happy birthday from Irene. You probably paid the right price, because uh, the market is a lot smaller than it used to be, but like collecting stamps. Yeah. You know, people just aren't doing it anymore. You're happy to get rid of them, obviously. Yeah, yeah, of course, yes. You know, there's no massive value in them, no. but even if you've got a few pounds for them, to pass them on to someone who's going to read them yeah. is actually quite a lovely thing. Absolutely. Kerry plans to take her family away on a caravan holiday, and the main things topping up the coffers are the Foreign Legion badges and her cameras. The problem you generally have is that people have really high expectations of what they're going to get back for their items. Now, this one's a bit easier. Kerry is realistic. All she wants is some money for a holiday. And you know what? I think she's going to end up getting it. We shall see. While Curtis has been rummaging for things to sell, decluttering is yet to kick off. But now Marianne has arrived to help show Kerry how to organise her stuff and work out what she doesn't need anymore. Oh, dear, you found my shoe collection. I have. Um... Oh, nightmare. Um... Basically, I have uh, a thing where I'll go out and um, I'm a bit of a shopaholic and I see a pair of shoes and I try them on in the shop and I walk around in them at home and then the next thing I know, they're off my feet and in the cupboard. 
So what do you think you're going to want to keep and what I, you're going to bin? I think there's about 10 pairs that I'm going to keep and then the rest of them I need to get rid of. I mean, um, there are shoes there that I'm just never going to wear. No matter how beautiful they are, how nice they are or how glamorous they are, mm. um, I'm never going to wear well, them. Well, I can so. always have some. You can, can yeah. My way. <laughs> I will give you half of my shoes. <laughs> so what we need to do is to make this short and sweet so that we can pack this up is to get get rid of what you don't want, yeah. what can go to charity and what you can keep. Yeah, I think the majority of this um, is going to be, um, obviously some of them are brand new, so if I can get rid of them on either eBay or car boot or something. This, to me, is a relatively a very easy job to do. Yeah. Easy for you, maybe. So while Marianne still has Kerry's wardrobe and daughter Emma's room to tackle, Curtis has finished gathering up anything he can find of value. The only thing I've got in this house to sell is the cameras. Everything else doesn't have an intrinsic value. That's my problem here. The only thing I would say is basically it needs a, just a good tidy up, clothes sold, whatever, any value, put the stuff back in the cupboard in an organised manner. That's all she needs. Busy lifestyle. Exactly, that's her lifestyle. It's taken over. <sighs> I better get selling. And I'm going to go and do those boxes. Come on, then. Marianne is staying behind to let Kerry declutter. And Curtis has taken her two Foreign Legion badges to a trader. Carries cat badges, all cleaned up. Let's see if I can sell these. And I've got a couple of badges here I want to show you. OK. First one is a Foreign Legion a cat badge off the cat pay. OK. And you don't see them very often. Want to it's buy so that. far enough from France to... Well, absolutely. Um, and the other one is a Thanks. naval badge, oh. which you might know something about. Submariner? Yes. Introduced in the 1950s. Right. The dolphins here, they came in in the early 70s. And that shows a specialisation. You've already qualified in one thing. Yeah. And you're going to do something else. But they're really good. Um, they're very pretty, very saleable. Even as a piece of jewellery, that's a really good design. It's very, very wearable. Yeah. This is in really good condition. Really, really good condition. OK. Are you interested in buying that? I'd like to sell them as a pair. Okay. I don't want them going individually. I, I imagine these are not going to be sitting on your shop front very long. No, they won't be. Right, OK. I, I already have a collector who would be, will, be, will be very interested in these. So, uh, um, am I right to agree on £30? I should, be, should I be pushing you for more? That's the deal. OK, £30 is a fair price. Deal. £30. Nice Thank doing you. business with you. Pleasure. Thanks ever so much. OK, bye. Have a good day. Those two cat badges have been sitting on Kerry's bedside table for ages. She's not over keen on them, she's not emotionally attached to them, and I've got rid of them for £30. I think she's going to be more than happy with that. Well, I am. Still to come, Marianne's brought to her knees. They go as far as the eye can see. And Curtis tries to sell Jan's vintage record player. Blunt question, is it something you'd buy off me? In Plymouth, cleaning expert Marianne is helping trainee teacher Kerry declutter her home of surplus shoes and dresses. Some of these things just need to be put in here and organised. I know, I know. But is yet to tackle her daughter's room. While back in Bristol, Jan's learning the lessons that come with decluttering. I think maybe once upon a time I did want a lot of it. I think I've outgrown it and just not been able to face getting rid of it, really. Curtis has taken her vintage record player to a market. He's hoping to sell it to Dila Andre. Fairly typical 1960s champion make. Um, a little bit of superficial damage, which can very easily be uh, sorted. Uh, the nice thing which it's got is the grill and the fabric covering here is still in good uh, condition, which is a, uh, a good thing, so that if you're looking at it as a, uh, as a piece of furniture rather than as a working record player, then it's got a lot going for it. Doesn't work. No. The cost of rewiring these sorts of things can be quite high and that can uh, obviously affect its resale value um, or whether it's worth doing at all. Um, so it becomes then just a uh, piece of furniture. But so it's a nice looking thing. So if, it's, if someone buys it to rewire, it's going to be a labour of love. It's yes. not going to be for profit. It's going to be... Mm, not really, no. What would you expect to pay for something like this to take it in? Probably about £10. And if it was rewired and working? 
30, 40 pounds. So there's not a huge amount it's, in it, really? No. Blunt question, is it something you'd buy off me? Um, for 10 pounds, yes. But for much more than that, then no. So I'm better off taking it away, and see if it, I can find a better home for it. Yes, yeah, indeed, yeah. Thanks for your time. You're very welcome. Hmm, a tenor does seem a tad low. Curtis reckons the best way to find someone who will love or love to restore this is to advertise it online. Back at home, Jan's concentrating on her other clutter. It just looks like a mountain to climb, doesn't it? This is my big day. I'm feeling really excited, um, nervous. There's a little bit, oh, do I really want to let that go? You do, you do. A friend who runs an animal charity shop has given her a challenge to fill 23 large bin bags with clothes. My strategy for sorting out the clothes definitely is the main focus at the moment is for charity. And I think once I've cleared the charity things, I'll be a bit clearer about what I do really want to keep. The idea of decluttering is to get rid, Jan, not build up the keep pile. Emotionally, it's very hard for me to let clothes go. I don't know why that is. I've, I've always had a thing about clothes. I don't think I'm any different from a lot of people, but maybe other people have actually, you know, bothered to put their stuff away. It'd be nice to sleep in a bedroom surrounded by piles of stuff. That's the spirit. One bag down, 22 to go. Hmm, this could take a while. After striking out with the record player, Curtis is hoping to strike it lucky with Jan's retro dressing table. He's taken it to upcycler and trader Norman. Now, Norman, I know this isn't really your thing, but it's kitsch and I wanted to bring it in to show you just in case you could be interested. It's just maybe a bit too kitsch for in here. Yeah. Do you think this is a very niche market at the yes. moment, this sort of thing? Yes, I do, but I believe that you will find someone who will be interested in it. I think it's going to be someone quite young and this is super retro for them then, isn't yes. it? Yes. Well, maybe next time. Thank you. Well, bad news, Norman hasn't bought Jan's furniture. But I tried, didn't I? I better get it out of his shop. Especially as this was really just testing the water. Plan B for both the dressing table and the vintage record player is to sell online. So yes, you'd better get it out of his shop and get listing. Back with our other hoarder, Kerry, she and Marianne are tackling daughter Emma's bedroom. Kerry. Yes. Another room with clutter everywhere. Yeah, this is my daughter's room, I'm afraid. This is Emma's room? This is Emma's room, yeah. Where does she find room to even sit and play with her things? Um, she tends to spend a lot of time on her bed, and her bed's obviously not messy, as you can see. Oh, what's this? <laughs> is she taking after you now? Uh, yeah, that's just a... It was um, actually a little bottle of wine in that, and she liked the shoe. It was like a gift from someone, so I drank a little bottle of sparkling Prosecco, and she said, Mummy, can I have the shoe? Oh. But, yes, she is. She does like us. She's got... She's liked her bling? She's got sparkly shoes, yeah. You say she's got as many shoes as you? Yeah. <laughs> so. And there they are, under the bed. Yeah, uh, they go as far as the eye can see, and um, there are quite a few pairs of these that she doesn't wear anymore now, so... But, as you can see, she likes her bling, too. Mm. I don't want her to be like me, though. I mean, I don't want this to carry on with Emma. I want her to understand that she can be organised and she won't have to come home to an untidy house. <laughs> So where has Carrie's clothes and shoes habit come from? My weight has fluctuated and gone up and down, so of course you buy more shoes, more clothes. Um, I have had cosmetic surgery, uh, tummy tuck and um, a nose job, and so things like that, you know, I, I changed my style of clothing then because I felt like I could wear more things that were fitted. So I was always very conscious of, of how I looked and how I felt about myself. Kerry, she's like a butterfly, flapping around, coming and going, not knowing where she is. There is piles of clothes, shoes, just stuff everywhere. There's just no organisation in her house. But with Marianne's encouragement, Kerry's got a plan to clear it, keep it tidy and make these positive changes part of the long-term plan for her and daughter Emma. 
I'll have a chore list, not just for her, but for myself. On this chore list, it will have a, a list of things that I need to accomplish each day because I think that's important to be a bit more productive and a bit more proactive and just make sure that I keep on top of things so that when I do declutter my house and declutter Emma's room, that we can continue to continue with the progress and that, you know, someone doesn't come back in a few weeks down the line, it's just as bad. I'll never let it get as bad as this again. That's been noted, Kerry. In Bristol, at Jan's house, friend and neighbour Jo has come along to help clear all her retro furniture and collectibles in the living room. Ow. <laughs> Are you going to help me get rid of my bits? I, don't yeah. know where, I just don't know where to start. I really, really don't. Neither does Jo, by the look of things. There's never nowhere to sit. It's always covered in boxes, the sofas, the chairs, so normally we have a cup of tea in my flat. Fancy helping me move yeah. this? Well, we've got to do part of here. <laughs> Just get rid of it, Joe. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's not enough space for it. <laughs> While some of the clutter will go to charity and some into the bin, other items will be sent off to sale. When was I ever going to get a henna tattoo? I don't know. What about all this behind here? Like this. Oh, I... the sewing machine's going to be sold. Even know what's in there. Oh, somebody's lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Yum. While Joe carries on downstairs, Jan's daughter Holly has offered to help out in the bedroom. My daughter's going to help me put stuff in the van. It does feel daunting, it feels overwhelming. That's probably why I've never tackled it in the first place, really. That's another one gone. But with a real push and Holly's help, you can actually see the carpet. We've made a hole in it and you can actually see the bed settee. And now Jan can start to imagine a future without clutter. I don't think I'm going to miss the things that have gone. Lots and lots of bags have gone, lots to charity. I'm not even thinking about it. I'm just thinking about the next thing that I want to do. Jan smashed her target of 23 bags and filled 30 bags for her friends at the charity shop and sent the rest of her clutter packing to be binned or listed for sale online. A few weeks later, and Jan has moved a mountain of clothes. I think I've worked incredibly hard, actually, and it may not look like it from the beginning, but I have cleared so much stuff. Marianne is about to visit, and newly house-proud Jan is making sure everything is just so. I'm really looking forward to seeing Marianne, actually. I think she's going to see a real difference from the last time she was here. Let's see. She's arrived. Hi, Jen. It's great to see you. Oh, lovely to see you. Come and show me what you've done. Come in, come in. Wow, look at I this. Know, it's so much brilliant. Fun, isn't it? It's really good. Yeah, this is great. I know. It looks so different, doesn't it? Does. It does. The There's time. so much more space and an airiness feel to it. I know. It's... You must be happy, though. I am happy. Before, the living room was a mishmash of retro collectibles and general clutter. And having shipped it all out, Jan's maisonette has gone from laden down to lived in. She's even found some old pieces of furniture that were buried under the clutter. This is new, isn't it? Yeah, I did that. That was hidden away upstairs. With the did you change the knobs and everything? I changed all the knobs, yeah. That's lovely. Oh, it really works well that now you have what I call a clutter-free space. And it just feels comfortable now. Mm. I can just come in. And and there's somewhere for you to sit, Jack. to sit. You never had anywhere to sit before. No, I didn't. It was it was really, really bad. I'm quite happy to admit I'm it. I'm really, really chuffed. But I want to see the other room. Come on, then. Before the declutter, Jan's bedroom looked more like an explosion at a jumble sale than somewhere to sleep. But now it feels homely and cosy. It's still full of Jan's beloved vintage, but it's a much more relaxing space. Oh, this is what I'm looking forward to. Well, it's certainly better than the last time you saw it. It's fab. I know, it's so Because you bigger. can actually see the bed. 
over there was all this pile of clothes yeah. everywhere. With the bed setting underneath. Exactly. I'm yeah. really pleased. And I'm going to carry on. And it sounds like Jan's caught the decluttering bug. On top of that, Marianne has some good news for Jan about her cash for clutter total. We can now reveal that the items that Curtis took away to sell, yeah. we have made you yes. a grand total yes. of £225. Oh, wow, really? Yes. Honestly, yes. I think that's amazing. I never expected that. I'd have been happy whatever you got, but mm. that is really amazing. Thank you so much. In the end, Jan's vintage record player managed to sell for £50 and her chest of drawers for £40. And online sales of a few other items brought her total so far to £225, all to put towards her charity trip to Machu Picchu. You know, Jan is a lovely person. We have had so much fun together in doing this. The more that I clear, the more I want to clear. It has made me feel really, really positive. It's a work in progress. Um, I want it to be ongoing. So by the end, I'm hoping every single bit of clutter will be gone. Still to come, Kerry's flat out decluttering. Ah, yay! I found the matching boot. <laughs> In Plymouth, Marianne and Curtis have been helping messy shopaholic Kerry get her house in order and make some money for a holiday. So we're saying, in total, 550 to 600 pounds. Now she's on her own and Kerry can't wait to get decluttering, starting in daughter Emma's room. Following Marianne's advice, I am going to um, use these red bags for the internet trading company. And I'm going to pick out quality items that I feel would make um, a reasonable amount of money. And I've promised Emma she can use it for the things that she wants to buy. And then all the other things that I don't feel that are quite up to that standard will go to charity. And she's leaving no corner untouched in a bid to find saleable goods. Oh, my, it's like the black hole in here. <laughs> ah, yay! I found the matching boot. <laughs> so that one will go in there. Oh, my, bedding. Hmm. I think she's a little bit too old for this book. It's uh, stories for four-year-olds, and she's nine. Secret diary. <laughs> surprise, surprise, locked. Kerry's son, Adam, has turned up to help. Well, this is just some of my mother's clutter. It's uh, been like this in most of our houses for as long as I can remember, really. I'm happy to be here helping her declutter the house. I think it'll be good for her to have a tidy house again, and I'm also hoping to find something here for myself. And Kerry has something in mind for Adam. Doesn't look terrible, though. Decent amount of memory. Dedicated graphics card in there. Not sure what size the hard drive is, but... W would it be better to split it for parts, or do you think um, it'd be quite good as just getting it up and running as a machine? Depends, really. I think it might be worth getting it up and running just to see what sort of parts are in there. Okay. Obviously, the parts are still... I mean, they're not going to be newer parts, but if they're powerful enough, it might be worth something. Adam clearly knows his stuff. Selling the individual components of a computer on online auction sites can net you more cash than selling the complete unit. All right, well, you take that one then, all right? And I'm just going to crack on. If there's anything else, I'll find I'll give you a shout, all right? One well, less bit of clutter for you. <laughs> there's somewhere else that could definitely do with a clear-out. Kerry's wardrobe. Another dress <laughs> with another label still on it for, um, for sale. There's probably well over four or five hundred pounds worth of clothes there that I've not even worn, or there's probably equally the same amount that I've only worn once. You're more likely to have success selling brand new clothes online, especially with tags, as it guarantees they will be in good condition. With the help of the experts and a desire to turn over a new leaf, it seems Kerry is committed to a new, tidier way of life. It feels very therapeutic. I feel that. Just by looking at it, I'm actually clearing out um, a lot of the uh, negativity that I've had going on. Kerry's done a phenomenal job clearing her flat, revealing the flaws in both bedrooms for the first time in a long time. It's nice to know that some of these items are going to go to charity and for worthy causes, and they're going to make you know some money out of it. And once all those bags are loaded into the van, Kerry can finally wave goodbye to all that clutter. I 
feel very, very positive right now, to be honest. Nice work. Curtis, meantime, has had some online interest in Kerry's photography equipment and the potential buyers coming to meet him. So, I've got Kerry's camera here and I've got Simone turning up. Now, she found the ad I placed on the internet to buy this. Now, I want £150 for it, but I think this lady's going to be a tough customer, so maybe there'll be a bit of haggling. Come on in. Come and take a seat. And I shall show you the camera. There we are. Have a browse. Make sure you're happy with it. No lens cap. Well, you could keep it in the bag, couldn't you, I guess? But it's a nice piece of kit, isn't it? Yes, it is very nice. And it certainly beats buying it new. Yes, and it's not too big, not too heavy, so I can take it on holidays with me. So I'm looking for 150. Well, without the lens cap, I'd probably say 130. Ooh, a woman who drives a hard bargain. <laughs> <sighs> I think that's a bit low. Let's... Should we shake hands on 140? Right, so... It's a deal. £140. Here we go. Let me count it out. You've just got this out of the cash point. <laughs> <laughs> and every note counts for Carrie. That's mine. That's yours. Job done. Well done. Seven weeks since Curtis first visited, Kerry's getting ready for his return. He wants to check her progress and reveal how much money's been made. So almost done, just a couple of finishing touches and we're done. Curtis is going to be amazed. Hello, how Good are you? Good morning. Come on in. Come Thanks on very in. much. After you. Thank you. Straight up the stairs? Yeah, straight up the stairs. Let's looking, go. Let's looking go good there. already. Thank you. First stop, daughter Emma's bedroom. Remember this. As if by magic rather than hard graft, it's as neat as a pin, ever so pretty and fit for a princess. Follow me. Well, have a look at this. Oh, now this is a wow. I know, it's amazing, isn't it? She's actually managed to keep it tidy as well. In fact, she's become quite thorough about it and she makes a bed every morning and puts Proud all her toys child. away. See, I couldn't, much I couldn't so. walk here. I now know. I, I'm dancing like, There was now. tents and... I couldn't the, even all... walk here. <laughs> and have a look under the bed. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Very little, and it's all nicely boxed yeah, up and she... kept. She's done this herself. I'm very, very proud. And Kerry's pride extends to her own bedroom. Before, it was more chaotic than calming. Wardrobes and drawers were overstuffed and shoes were flung in a messy heap. Now... It's been cleared and transformed from a hoarder's nightmare into a dream pad. It's a different bedroom, isn't it? It is, yes, it certainly is. This looks fantastic. Clear bed, no jewellery on the I side. I know, I know, it's amazing. And I've actually got a wardrobe that I can now use. Seven or eight bags went to the charity shop. There it's was a lot of bags. about ten bags that went to the online trader. And the wardrobes had a makeover too. This is so minimal. You know, I've sort of streamlined it down and I've just kept the dresses that I, I felt that I needed. Curtis is impressed, but there's still another job to do. Let's talk about money. Well, OK, so it's work in progress. Okay. There's still things to sell. OK. But uh, your cat badges have gone. OK, fantastic. And one of your cameras so far has gone. Wonderful. But there are still other things in the pipeline. OK. So, so far, we're up to £175. Right, OK. Which is good. I'm it pleased with good, that. It is good, yeah, because, there's, you know, considering there's still um, all the clothes and shoes and the other camera... Other and... camera. I think you could end up with a tidy sum out of all this. Yeah, which would be fantastic. And since then, Kerry's made another £45 from online sales making a great cash for clutter total so far, with more sales still to come. And she's decided to put the money towards her elder daughter's college digs. Kerry's done a great job of this house, and I think that's a wonderful thing to do with this cash. Nothing for her, all for her family. For me, it's been a great experience, and Kerry seems delighted.
the fact that you know that there's a reasonable amount of money that's been made and you know continuing amounts that might be made um, that's going to be really good to help fund my daughter's um, education it has been a real pleasurable experience and um, had some fun actually